What do you reckon? Is this the future of farming? I reckon it could well be. I'll be sat at home in my, in my lazy boy, like I am when I play farm sim, but I'll be doing it for real. Right now, before we go any further, obviously that autonomous tractor is not going to be for everyone. And I can hear the comments now, oh, we don't need robotic tractors, we don't need auto steer, we don't need technology. Well, I am a fan of technology, but I'm also a fan of stuff like this. This is my Bolaris DT75. It's a twin track crawler. It's the same principle as that Agseed autonomous crawler. Obviously, without all the tech, there's no technology on here. But obviously in this video it's just the first look we're at the normac show and um, this is my first impressions of the crawler uh, obviously there's going to be a ton of questions we've got to ask like what happens if the implement blocks does the tractor know does it send you a text message does it alert you or whatever but these questions we'll have a look at when it comes on farm and we get our hands on it properly and we can put it through its paces because obviously there's, there's there's lots of variables with farming it's not just go up and down the field and it's you know controlled environment it doesn't work like that but anyway that's for the next video on the autonomous crawler so this is just the first impressions give us your thoughts in the comments and enjoy so um it's working autonomous mode to turn it into manual mode yeah mm. just try and press number three yeah right so that's, so that's, yeah. now that's immediately off. stopped yeah absolutely so to lift the implement out of the ground Press and hold that button. Yeah. And once you're holding it, use this button here. Oh, it's uh... That's it. Perfect. Look right. at that, yeah, yeah. Try and use that button to drive it forward. That's handbrakes on, sorry. Let go of that. Push that button left. That takes handbrake off. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Press yeah. come up. So that will now that go forward. forward. That's left and right, give presumably. It, give it a try. Right, left and right. Give it a try. Yeah, I mean, I them both at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I hope you don't mind being on camera, by the way. Well, I'll do farm sim. <laughs> <laughs> so that's basically... But it's intuitive, isn't it? I mean, it's yeah. obviously, yeah. So if it finishes field, once it move it into the next field... You can do it manually. Manually, yeah. yeah, yeah. Changing implements. It's far easier when you stood right like next to it. Looking at the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So... Obviously, a robotic machine must have sensors on it to detect obstacles. Yeah. But if we go and walk in front of it whilst it's in autonomous mode, it will stop. Yeah. It won't just mow us down with a lovely uh, dozer blade on the front. Right? No. So, various sensors around the front of it. To be insurable, to be legal, you yeah. need multiple sensors for redundancy. Yeah. The so LiDAR at the top oh, yeah, yeah. is going 20 meters around you all the time. Yeah. Full 360. We have radar down here. Okay, yeah, yeah. It does the same job. Yeah, yeah. Just like um, uh, cruise control. Yeah. Cruise control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if it does, yeah, it protects an object, you can just stop that or voice it or whatever. Like, yeah. Ultrasound, like parking sensors in the back of the car. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the little ones. Yeah, yeah, I see them, yeah. And worst case scenario is the front sensor. minutes of idling it turn it off. Oh it'll we'll say we'll have, yeah yeah yeah. So it really needs to be needs to be any heat, anything warm in front of it, yep. or anything that's moving. Yeah. That'll bring it to a halt. Telegraph poles, trees are all programmed in. Yeah. So you see on the map before you send it send it the mission. Make sure they're on there. Yeah. 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 But even if it does hit it, it will still stop because so, it'll, it'll hit the bumper, yeah? yeah. I was going to say, what's the, what's the main application so far? Are there various sort of things? Various, yeah. <clears throat> so we've got machines running mowing turf. Yeah. A customer who covers 3,000 acres a week in Kent. Yeah. Because he needs to keep that, that grass, grass trim. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, mainly arable customers. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, the ability to run the 24 hours a day, 20 hours at a time, means something like this will cover 100 acres in a day. Yeah. So. People are often asking, are you building a bigger one? Well, really, you can cover so much ground through the night, yeah. there's no real you need to go to six the, metres there's, or... There's no you know. benefit at the minute, Lord. Does it, how much do you need to monitor, or does it sort of, I presume it... 
monitors itself. Yeah, it tells you for, yeah. yeah. So you've got 360 cameras. The LiDAR on the top, you see just below the LiDAR, yep. the little, little a little camera. camera, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's one of those front and rear, yep. and collectively they give you a 360 view of the whole machine. Oh, yeah. So um, while you're laid in bed, you can see, you can turn the lights on, the front, oh, remotely. Yeah, yeah. You turn the lights on, you can check the cameras, yep. turn the lights off if you don't want to annoy the neighbours late at night. <laughs> when so, you think about it, it's fantastic, isn't it? Because you're in bed. You haven't got a bloke out there working, lone, lone working at night, all through, all through the night. That just keeps going. Yep, yep, yep. Very consistent in its work. You know, the, the corner's really good with a, right, a three-point linkage back implement. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Very manoeuvrable, like, yeah, especially yeah, on yeah. the two-track system, like, it can obviously turn on its own length, can't it? So. Yeah, yeah. Machine. Essentially, it's like your your little cat challenger, 160 horsepower, fully autonomous. I mean, the future is here. Like I say it's got the lidar on it, got all the sense, got about four or five redundancies on it. So if it encounters an obstacle, um, something that's not supposed to be there, or got the big kid seat going up and down the field, and they come and try and muck, you know mess with it or whatever. It's not going to, you know, because it's, it's got that amount of redundancy, it's not going to run you over. But yeah, potent machine, potent machine. And although the bumper looks like that's steel, that's just, um, just a foam mat at the front. Oh, there you go. And that's done it, isn't it? That's, it. that's what it's supposed to do, wasn't it? Do. And that was just a little tap. Yep. Yep. Just like that. Oh, well, we'll get it going again and... See her in action. That really was just a little tap. So legislation states that uh, anything 50 centimetres off the ground yep. should cause the machine to stop. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we do any damage to that item. Oh, item or whatever it is. Or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that's digital, digital through the bumper, and that'll cause it to immediately stop, kills the engine dead, all the services, PTO, hydraulics. Um, but technically, in theory, we should never hit anything. All the proximity sensors yeah, yeah. should um, should prevent that from happening. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Slow down. The um, lights around the top. <clears throat> there's three different modes. Yellow um, is ready. Engine's ready. Yep. We then have a green mode which suggests that the map is loaded so we digitally oh, okay. know that's what it was on before, uh, before yeah. I turn it off yeah yeah, it. yeah yeah so that indicates that you're in the geo fence you're yeah. in the digital boundary yeah when it's working legally we have to have a flashing light yeah. so that changes between green and amber okay yeah yeah and then the third one is when you approach or the machine approaches any obstacle or a person the lights will change purple Okay, and it'll yeah. only change purple where it can see you. Yes. So if, if you if ah. it's driving down here, you walk towards it, it turns purple. You know it's it's identified you as an object, yeah. like yeah. Which yeah, is yeah. really reassuring when you've got any obstacle, yeah. people walking around, intruders. Yeah. It's very reassuring for you as a bystander and for that person yeah. that's causing intrusion that it knows there's someone there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It gives you that indication, like yeah. So I've had it tractor pulling in Holland. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, technically, if it had been legal to enter, because yeah. it isn't a person on it, it's not legal, it would have won the 8 ton class. Oh. <laughs> so, the hell. it performs similar to about a 200 horsepower tractor, yeah. as you know with your T-Dub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not necessarily power you run short of, it's traction. Yeah, yeah. So, with, with tracks more, like these, yeah. Yeah. more weight, you would have got even more traction, like, yeah. So, we offer different track widths. In Holland, we've got them running um, for lettuce work. Yep. So we're down to three to foot foot tracks. Yep, yep, 12 inch, yeah, yeah. That's it. 300 mil, and we go right up to 900s. So, uh, oh, so you can float as well, yeah. yeah, yeah. So in Holland, you know, most of it's underwater, very light, loamy soils. Yeah, yeah. So after sugar beet harvest in, in um, over there, these machines can go on where you can't take a wheel tractor. Mm. Pull the soil up, get it cultivated, get it dry, and in the spring, these guys can get on planting daffodils and other. And stuff like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Earlier, but earlier than uh, you can with a wheel machine. Yeah. yeah. We have a dealer yeah. in Holland who is playing with reversible so plowing. But as you can imagine, when doing headlands with reversible plowing, you need to know which way your plow is to. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit tricky a lot, but it's only throw around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, spading is very typical.
saw one in Holland. Yeah. Arrow harrowing, obviously. Drilling. Drilled some maize with it. Combination drilling. Um, rolling, obviously. And then Will here will be putting fertiliser on with it. Okay, next yeah. spring. Want to get a root path, root path sink. Um, Pretty much. Whatever you can do with a normal tractor, yep. that's what Cable are doing. Yep. That's, to be fair, that's blooming amazing. And fully safe and insurable. Well, to be honest, that thing has blown me away. I didn't realise we were at the stage where these fully autonomous tractors are out in the field working. Uh, Anxi said they've got like, about four of them out working. Doing this sort of job, doing it. Anything a standard tractor can do, that thing can do. It's funny, when you just sort of look at that, it don't even really register that it's an autonomous tractor. Obviously it hasn't got the cab on it and it's you know, obviously not a man tractor, but you just sort of... It doesn't seem out of place if you know what I mean, it's just going up and down like any other tractor. Do you know what I mean? That, that does impress me though, that really does impress me. I think we'll have to, at some point, have a closer look at one of these you know when we've got a bit more time you know not on the show we're gonna have a look see uh have a look at one in a bit more detail get a bit more of the uh you know the technology inside because obviously there's a lot of technology involved you know with all the uh, sensors and radars um and gps obviously so uh yeah but what a machine i am a fan of it i really am but you know me i mean i I love technology, but I'm not a technophile, you know, I'm, 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 you know, I also like my old school, hence, yeah, you know, I've got TW, so, you know, I can like both things. TW's got his place, so is that robotic crawler. <laughs>